Well, hello there. So we're going to do a head warmer, headband, ear warmer, and a head warmer, however you want to call it. And it can come down to your neck or it can go over your ears or however you want it. And if you wanted to, you could use the same pattern here to make a cowl out of it by being on a bigger loom. Now you want to use any loom that is going to be your perfect size for a ear warmer. For me, I like it a little smaller than my headband is because I like it to be nice and tight on me. So I'm using a 5 8 inch 36 peg Cindy Wood loom. Mostly this will be too small for most women. So you'll want to have a little bit bigger loom, but you just use the loom that's the right size for you. Okay, For this is the my autumn twist stitch. And it's a really beautiful stitch. There you can see it there. There we go. A really, really pretty stitch in the round. And I already have the stitch video out, so you'll see what it looks like as a flat panel. But it looks really, really nice both ways. And it looks like this on the other side, just nice and smooth against your head. Okay, so that's uh, what the stitch looks like. The yarn I'm using is um, King Cole Riot Chunky Yarn. It's a bulky yarn in the color Heather. And it's this mix of pretty colors. And the loom hook I'm using is just this loom hook. It's a painted wood loom hook. Um, ergonomic. It's nice. The company doesn't make them anymore, but they have similar ones on Etsy. They're in resin instead of wood. Um, and they they probably have some other ones and different enamels and things. But I know there's lots of different kinds of loom hooks that you can get on Etsy. Okay, so to get started, we'll just uh, take you to uh, my cast on video. And then we'll meet back up and learn to do the stitch. So we'll see you in a few. So I'm going to show you how to start this piece. And I'm going to show you the cast on and the first few rows before we start into the pattern. The yarn I'm using for this is Atlantis, uh, Estelle Atlantis, and the color is Gleam. And it's a combination of yellows and creams and uh, light taupe and copper and bronze and uh, lots of those colors in it. And it's a bulky. And it's, um, um, I guess, it's pretty close to charisma width to give you an idea of how big a bulky it is. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is a chain cast on. So what I do is I just make a slip knot. And any way you make a slip knot is fine. It just goes on the first peg like that. And we take the loom hook, put it inside the loop, and pick up a yarn. And so that we have a loop of yarn here. I'm just going to keep this tight over here. And then I'm going to come over behind the next peg put the working yarn through and snug it up behind working yarn through snug it up behind whoop <laughs> behind and we caught two pegs <laughs> snug it up behind snug it up and we just do that all the way around the loom and that's a chain cast on it's one of the crochet casts on cast ons works really good you can use a crochet hook to do this if you want I find it a lot easier just to do with my hands but if you're in a very tiny gauge loom you might really need a hook to get your fingers in between the pegs this uh, cast on can be used on any size of loom with the appropriate yarn for that gauge I use this cast on with most of my pieces because I like the look of it. 
I do use other ones from time to time just because I think they go nicer with the work. But this one is nice. You don't have to worry about tightening any loops. It has a really nice appearance. And um, I just kind of do this weird thing when I do it because that helps me to get the right tension. But you can do it in one smooth motion too. Just the way I like to do the, the chain cast on. Get some more yarn out of here. Okay. Whoop, caught this in it. <laughs> there we go. And then I just plop it on the last peg. And then you notice there's a space here. You could also pop it on there, but I find it makes this really thick here. So what I've started doing is just ending right here when I do this cast on. And then just knit it off. And then we're just going to come over here and knit this to secure it. And then what I do, because there's only one piece of yarn coming here and it's thicker in here, is I take this loop that I had left and put it over here and then I just knit it over. And that makes it blend in better. At least that's what I think. And also this is partially secured already so it will stay tighter and not loosen up on you now, which sometimes happens. Okay, so um, what we're going to do with this stitch, and I've already done one knit stitch here, is we're just going to do a row of unit. So a row of unit right after the cast on. This completes the cast on part of it. And a unit is just over the peg like that and knit it off. If you're doing this pattern, I'd be pretty sure you already know how to unit, but just in case. And it gives you one of the, well, the real knit stitches, really, since E-Wrap is a twisted knit, and it's the same as knitting through the back loop and needle knitting. But these all give you the, the V stitch, which is the knit stitch. And this yarn has lots of nice color changes. I really like it. Oh, it's 50% wool and 50% acrylic. So really nice to work with. Unless you're one of those people that's allergic to wool. But if you're not, it's beautiful to work with. It just glides on. And we must almost be back there. <laughs> well, if it's not yet, we're almost back there. I was going to pause it if it was still a long ways. And I will do that on some of these rows just because it's going to really take up a lot of length in the video. Okay, Oop. <laughs> and this is loose because it's this, this one right here. Okay, now what we're going to do is a row of pearl. So just go down, pull the working, pull some a loop up and do that. I'll do it slower, but you should know how to pearl. So we're just going to put this in just like the same way when we cast on. We came in through here. Now we're going to take this loop and pull it up just like we did with the cast on except we're going to take everything off here and then just put the loop back on. We just put it right over like that. And that's all there is to a purl. So we're just going to purl all the way around. Just want to have a good strong non-curling base and of course when we cast off we're going to do the same thing 
do the same row as we did here so it matches. Okay, I'm going to put it on pause while I go around and do the purl. Okay, so I completed my row of purl. Now I'm going to do another row of unit followed by another row of purl. So that's all we're going to do is another row of knit and then another row of purl. So what we did was we cast on, we did a row of unit, and then we did a row of purl, and then another row of unit, and another row of purl. So I'm just going to put you on pause, finish my row of knit, then I'm going to do my row of purl, and then we'll be all ready to start the stitch. So I'll see you in a few minutes. Okay, so I did the, the second row of knit and the second row of purl. And uh, this is what it looks like. It just gives you a, a beginning like that so that that edge will never curl. Okay, so now that you found on, then uh, you're ready to start doing the pattern right after that bind off, bind on series. So here's what I did a little bit more just so you can see more what the pattern looks like before we get started. Very, very pretty. Very, very pretty stitch. And there's what the border looks like. So it'll be nice and neat on the sides. Okay. So it's a two row stitch. And the first peg, so right after you finish the, the bind on, cast on, you're going to do twisty stitch for row one. So you go over like that in a U-wrap and you come back in a U-wrap and from behind over in a U-wrap back the other way and from behind to the next peg. So there's two stitches on every peg. Now you'll know when you're doing the twisty because you're going to see that you've got work on the right hand side right there. So you know that's a twisty stitch. So if you uh, put down your work, you wanted to get up and you wonder what stitch you're doing, you'd see you were doing twisty. The st other stitch we're doing looks like this. It has two little things on each side. And if you look at the inside, where we're doing twisty, there's a line coming across like this. Or here it is. When you're doing the other stitch here, it's not really like that. The line is way up high like that. And then you see the two little pieces of work on the side there. So they do look different. So you'll be able to tell which one you're on. Okay, so you go over in a U-wrap, come back this way. And I am snugging it up slightly when I'm coming across, but twisty looks a little uh, better when it's loose. So I don't uh, do very much. I just want to keep them neat. So I thought all these little balls are around the same side that are on the side there. They're going to be around the same size. Okay, so do it again really slowly. Go around in a U-wrap. Knit it off. Come back the opposite way. Knit it off. From behind, tightening it slightly, coming over, doing it again. Really, really easy stitch. Gives you a beautiful texture. So pretty easy. This is all you do. And just go whip it along. Okay, so that's how you do that stitch. And I also have twisty stitch on my channel, a stitch video, so you can go take a look at it if you need to. Okay, so I'm just going to get to the end of the row and do row two, so I'll meet you up in a little bit. Okay, so for row two, and I just started going on row two, so you start on the first peg. 
And uh, for row two, what we're doing is this. We go from behind and we do a U-wrap. And then we come back over in front and knit it off. And this stitch is called the Twisted Owl Stitch. So just knit it over. Okay, so E-wrap and come back like this. And if you're too tight, you're not going to be able to knit it over. You want to just hold it so that you can knit it over. Pretty easy. So E-wrap and then back over. Frontwards and a U-wrap, E-wrap, come back go in the U-wrap. Okay, I'll do it slowly. E-wrap. I come back over and then I just did it over like that. E-wrap. Knit it over. Okay, and that's what gives you this nice pattern. Those two stitches like that. So I'm getting to be almost long enough for what I want for the headband. So I'm going to go ahead, do a couple more rows, and then I'm going to bind it off. So I'm going to take you to the bind off video, because I've got a bind off video already made, and it matches this cast on. And also all, all the way, it'll look the same. Okay, so I'll take you there now, and then uh, we'll see you after and look at the finished piece. Okay, I just added it on this little piece to make sure that before you bind off, you do the same thing you did when we cast on, which was we did, remember, we did the row of knit, then purl, then knit, then purl. So just before the cast off, you're going to do the row of purl, then a row of knit, then a row of purl, then a row of net. So you need to do those four rows, okay, before the cast off. See you in a bit. Okay, so I've done the four rows. And now what we're going to do is go ahead and we're going to do a very stretchy bind off so that we can get it looking like it does at the beginning of the piece. So I went around the loom with, with the yarn two and a half times. You can go up to three if you'd like, and then I cut it. So that's how much yarn I have to do this with. Um, you can always uh, use extra yarn because you can always cut it off. But I found I never go over the two and a half times around. Okay, and so then we just get a good needle, and I've got a nice short needle with a great big eye here. I like this needle. And then we get the yarn through it. You can also use a loom hook, but I find a needle a lot easier. Okay, so we're just going to make sure our, our stitch here is tight, and this is where we're starting. And so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be going up the stitch that we just came from. And then we're going to tighten that. And then we're going to go behind it. And we're going to go down the next stitch and just pull the yarn through. Make sure you're on this side of the loop or else you'll be pulling it through the loop and you don't want that. Okay? Okay. And then what I'm going to do is go oop, up this one once more. Because this is just my starting place. And I'm going to go behind this one and I'm going to go down 
the new peg. And this is the pattern all the way now. We're just going to go down the new peg, pull it through, and tighten it, and go up the old peg. It gets easier once the yarn gets shorter. <laughs> okay, and then we're going to go behind the peg that was the new peg. A little bit awkward here for me. Okay, so we went behind this peg and we're going to go down the new peg. Pull it tight. And up the old peg. Okay, so we're going to go behind, and that's the peg that was new last time, and then we're going to go down the new peg. <laughs> and up the old peg. And behind and down the new peg. Now, if you have a yarn that frays really easy and this process frays it, frays it while you're doing this, then that's okay. You can cut that off, secure it with a knot and leave it in later. And then you can just add a new yarn and go. You can uh, tie it on to the end that you cut off if it's not too badly frayed and then sew it all in later. But however you'd like to do that, that's a way to do it if you're fraying. This yarn doesn't fray, so I'm using a nice long yarn. But just a tip, because sometimes you'll get a yarn that w will not like the process of binding off. Um, <laughs> I seem to be tangled here in my wire. <laughs> okay, we'll cut it off now. Okay, so here we are. So if you have to stop in the process, you look at where you are, and you see the yarns coming out of here. So that means that was the last one you worked. So you're going to go behind and go down the new peg. And up the old peg. Okay. And behind and down and up. Okay, so I'm just going to skip ahead a little bit, and then we can catch up. Okay, so I've got, uh, I'm almost to the end here. And uh, this is a lot shorter now. Okay, so here I am, and I'm going behind the peg, and I'm going down. Okay, now it's much easier down and up and behind, tightening it down, up and behind, down. up 
behind. So it's not really hard to do except uh, this one because I have a little bit of a knot there that developed. Okay, and then up. And behind. Down. And up. And behind and down <laughs> there you go <laughs> and up and behind and down and up And behind and down <laughs> like there we go because I'm at the end so basically now I've connected every peg they're all connected so I'm just going to leave this here to actually do a knot or I could do a knot right now because it's important to um, do a knot to secure it. I sometimes do it at the end, but I'm just going to do it now. So we're just going to do a <clears throat> there, a knot. There we go. And then I will be weaving in that end, um, turning it in so you don't see the knot and weaving it in after. But now we can take the needle off and we can take our loom hook again. And then we can just start taking off the pegs. And we just take them off all the way around the loom. Some of them will be tighter. I find if I go the opposite way, it's looser and easier to take it off. So go back the way that I had just come. looks like kind of funny big loops right now but okay so there we go we just take the loom off now and so then what we want to do is we want to stretch it I go all the way around uh, stretching it okay so here we are here is the headband neck warmer ear warmer and uh what it looks like this way, which was the way we were knitting it. Really pretty pattern. And the bind off and cast off match really nicely. So there you go. And of course you stretch out your work and everything. But there we go. Nice stretch on both ends. And uh, there we are. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed the video. And until next time, bye.